What we're experiencing is what we call a swarm event. Um, basically, California's entire tectonic plate has shifted. People need to know that the shaking is not over, and it's not aftershocks I'm talking about. San Francisco will get hit again, and it's going to be a bigger monster this time. Our models are predicting a 9.5 or greater. Standing in this remarkable spot, you can literally feel the forces of Earth at work. It is the meeting point for two major tectonic plates, which have been struggling to overpower each other for an eternity. This place is the infamous San Andreas Fault Line. It is the boundary between the Pacific and the North American tectonic plate. Scientists have been keeping an eye on this area for decades, and it is considered one of the biggest threats faced by Southern California today. But, how is that possible? Why is it so dangerous? The San Andreas Fault has a long and violent history. Stretching approximately 1,200 kilometers is an example of a continental transform fault. This fault is divided into three segments the northern segment from Hollister to the Mendocino Triple Junction, the central segment from Parkfield to Hollister, and the southern segment from Parkfield to the Salton Sea. The San Andreas Fault has been the epicenter of several earthquakes, the deadliest of which being the 1906 San Francisco quake, which claimed the lives of over 3,000 people. Since the last earthquake on the San Andreas, seismologists and geologists have been keeping a careful check on the fault line since they consider it to be nothing less than a ticking time bomb. They are aware that an enormous catastrophe might strike at any moment and that California has to be ready. In some areas, roads and buildings have been constructed directly on top of the fault, increasing the risk of damage, in the event of an earthquake. A significant portion of the population in California, resides in the region surrounding this fault. San Francisco's BART system even has a tunnel that passes through the fault zone. The fault has a slip rate of between 20 and 35 millimeters per year, meaning that the plates are moving at a steady pace but the pressure builds up over time before being released in the form of a large earthquake. Andrew Lawson, a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, discovered the San Andreas Fault in 1895. It is often believed that the northern portion of the fault was named after a small lake, in the valley between the two plates, known as the San Andreas Lake. After the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, Lawson deduced that the fault extended as far south as, Southern California. The whole length of the San Andreas Fault system is almost 800 miles, and it goes down at least 10 miles into the Earth. From a few hundred feet to a mile in width, the fault is a complicated zone of crushed and shattered rock. The San Andreas Fault Observatory at Depth, or CIFID, was a project that ran from 2004 to 2007 near Park Field in Monterey County. Its goal was to collect data and run physical and chemical tests to better understand the strange behavior. Scientists came to the conclusion that there is a high possibility of a big earthquake in California that will lead to the destruction of the Hoover Dam and several industrial and residential areas, and that a huge wave is likely to occur and hit the infamous Golden Gate Bridge. The movie fanatics among you might already know about this, if you watched the movie San Andreas, featuring the one and only Dwayne Johnson. Before making San Andreas, the people who made it talked to Thomas Jordan, who runs the Southern California Seismic Center. However, the level of destruction depicted in the film, significantly exceeds the actual potential damage, that could be caused by a catastrophic earthquake, known as the Big One. It is likely that the filmmakers did not adhere closely to Jordan's recommendations. According to Jordan, since the San Andreas Fault lies far inland than the land slips past on either side, an earthquake cannot cause the fault to split apart into a massive chasm as in the movie. Instead, big tsunamis like the one that struck Japan are caused by earthquakes that cause a significant displacement of the ocean floor. Since its formation around 15 to 20 million years ago, geologists estimate that the San Andreas Fault has been displaced a total of at least 350 miles due to earthquakes. Geologically identical terrains on either side of the fault, currently separated by 150 miles, were discovered in studies of a section of the fault between Tejon Pass and the Salton Sea. There are stretches of the San Andreas Fault, and other plate boundaries where major earthquakes have not happened for a very long period. These voids are known to scientists as seismic gaps, 
and in many cases, they have been able to accurately predict when huge earthquakes would occur in these voids. The southern San Andreas hasn't had a major earthquake since 1857, making it a prime target for a quake in the near future. Ned Field, a seismologist with the U.S. Geological Survey, thinks that Southern California is locked and loaded because the pressures have really built up and could explode for years. Because, the two plates don't just collide at a single point, the state is crisscrossed by many earthquake faults. San Andreas, according to Jordan, is the most concerning fault line, because it produces earthquakes, which are very deadly for people living in California. Historical records of earthquakes and studies of seismic faults, show that in Southern California, big earthquakes happen on average every 110 to 140 years. In 1857, close to Palm Springs, a 7.9 magnitude earthquake happened near Los Angeles. This was the last big earthquake. Every few years, seismologists make a prediction about how likely it is that something like this will happen, even though they can't say exactly when it will happen. In its most recent prediction, the USGS said that there is a 7% chance that a magnitude 8 earthquake will happen in California within the next 30 years. Which is nothing new for Californians, as we've established that the region has weathered its fair number of earthquakes in the past. If that's the case, then, why are seismologists sounding the alarm? According to Jordan, a magnitude 8.3 earthquake might be feasible in California, if the whole San Andreas fault ruptured from the Mexican border to Northern California, but he doesn't believe that's realistic. A group of scientists, who study earthquakes, came up with the shakeout scenario a few years ago, to try to figure out what might happen, when the big one comes. Seismologists predict how the Earth would shake, and engineers and social scientists use that information, to make predictions about the damage and effects that would happen. A 7.8 earthquake that hypothetically hit the Coachella Valley, at 10 a.m. on November 13, 2008, was investigated in depth. Within minutes, the earthquake's waves spread over California, destroying older structures, causing traffic problems, and cutting off water and electric supplies. However, they observed that the earthquake was just the beginning, and that hundreds of fires broke out as a result of the clogged highways and damaged water systems. Smaller flames combine into bigger ones, destroying whole portions of the city. Lucy Jones, a seismologist at the USGS, argues that the scenario may be overstated. Jones says that the scientists who did the analysis were shocked by how bad the fire damage was from the earthquake. If the Santa Ana winds are blowing at the time of the earthquake, things could get even worse. Even though Los Angeles has a water supply on its side of the San Andreas Fault, the drought has caused the reservoirs to run dry. Because of this, these seasonal winds blow dusty, dry air from the interior to the coast, which makes wildfires more likely. Aside from the San Andreas, the Hayward Fault, which runs along the base of the Barkley Hills and right through the University of California, is a ticking time bomb. It runs beneath a theater and a few dorms on the stairs of the California Memorial Stadium. Scientists already know that the Hayward creeps ahead gradually, but they also know that faults rupture and shatter, and that this rupturing will occur abruptly, and without warning. The local economy might quickly collapse, in the absence of functional infrastructure, and residents would flee Los Angeles. Jones was concerned that the impossible scenario of the imaginary San Andreas disaster may convince people that they have nothing to worry about, or that there is nothing they can do about it, even though it might serve as another wake-up call for Californians. Although it is currently not possible to accurately predict earthquakes, some people may still believe that experts can give them advance warning of major earthquakes. However, even if this is not the case, it is important for people in California to be prepared for future earthquakes by identifying vulnerabilities and taking steps to improve the city's resilience. But these steps would be expensive, take a long time to put into place, and could face other problems. The USGS believes that a major earthquake along the San Andreas Fault could be the most catastrophic natural disaster to hit North America and has created a website to inform the public about this possibility. Even though, a large earthquake is unlikely to occur anytime soon, it is a good idea to be prepared, in case one does occur, so you are not caught off guard. That's all for this video.
and we will see you soon in the next one, and like always thanks for watching our video.